so good morning, everyone. Um, Hugh buzzed out early this morning. He was trying to meet our builder out at the farm bright and early. Our builder tends to show up about 6, 6.30 in the morning. Um, and, then, and then he's off to other places. So Hugh left early. Um, seeing Dr. Candle this morning, Bailey has a swollen nose. Ooh, hopefully it's just like a bee sting or something. Um, okay, so I was trying to figure out what to talk about this morning. By the way... Did everybody see Gwen's talk yesterday? That girl's amazing. I think I chose like absolutely the best person in the world to carry on this legacy and what we've been trying to do. Oh yeah, Amazon dental drop problem. Ugh, Lord, yeah, we're, we're, Gwen is battling that. <laughs> Thank God for Gwen because I would just throw my hands up in the air and say, I'm done. Um, is there a drop for early cataracts? We actually had a company contact us about it about a drop that is on the market and um you know of course they claim great success but i asked in my veterinary herbal group uh if anyone had experience with the product and the reviews were eh, so so really not very good so i decided i did not want to um to uh team up with them because if I'm going to carry a product, as Gwen said, we want to make sure that we've researched it and it's not going to do any harm and it's actually going to be helpful. So um, we decided uh, not not to connect. So I, no, I do not have a great drop for cataracts at this point, early cataracts. But remember the eyes are the um, yes, chins are prone to early onset MVD. Uh, the eyes are the window of the liver. Remember that. So uh, you want to drain the liver if you're starting to see that cloudiness in there. So milk thistle, asparagus, radishes, dandelion greens, all that stuff I always talk about. Um, okay. So uh, somebody posted on the friends of, um, or friends who like Judy Morgan, what, Denise Newland's page. <laughs> Gwen's very active on it as well, uh, that they just got, I think, a, a new German Shepherd and they discovered the dog has a perianal fistula and those things are so painful and very difficult to deal with. But I have had really um, good success dealing with them in my practice, especially when we catch them early. So if this dog only has one fistula, um, and they're catching it pretty early, then they have a really good chance of um, a high rate of success with this. So um, first of all, if you've got a draining tract, and she said the dog's on antibiotics because it's got a draining uh, fistula there, you want to get a culture. Don't just start throwing different antibiotics at it because a lot of times those have some really nasty bacteria growing in them and you want to know which antibiotic to choose so that you get it right the first time. You don't wanna to have to keep screwing up the guts with more and more and more antibiotics. Um, and we do need to get the mi gut microbiome back in good shape. So once you have those culture results, you treat with an effective antibiotic for um, whatever length of time, uh, usually seven to 10 days. Some of them can be a little bit longer. Um, this is where we combine that traditional with the holistic. And then we've got to get a good probiotic in there. We've got to get that microbiome back in shape. Um, so probably uh, one of the soil-based probiotics. We've got a couple on the website now. Um, I'd want to get, get that going as soon as possible to get the gut back in good shape. The other thing you want to do is you really want to get the diet right on these guys. Now, a lot of these, um, we see these in these wood personality dogs very commonly. German Shepherds are definitely, I, I think, I think every case I saw was a German Shepherd. I might have seen one in an American Bulldog, um, but it really tends to be a Shepherd problem. Um, and what it is, it's damp heat. So remember, we've been talking about summer damp heat. I wrote a blog on it yesterday that I'll post next week uh, because we're trying to get the herbs in stock that I talk about in the blog. Um, but it's it's dampness, stickiness, moistness with heat. And that's why we get the pus and the infection. Um, and it's in the lower part of the body. And the best herb for that is Si Miao San. Um, and uh, I talk about that herb a lot, but it's really good for helping dry these things up. So I will get 
my antibiotics on board based on the culture. I will get good probiotics on board to get the gut back in good shape. I'll use my herbs like the sea mouse on. Sometimes when the dogs present to me, I look at them and say, ooh, we might need something else in addition to this. So there might be a second or a third herb that we would add in, but that's kind of, um, our fistulas and humans and pets similar. I didn't know that it was a big problem with humans, but um, sure. <laughs> I don't do people medicine and even the thought of that makes me want to vomit. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I can't, if Hugh cuts his finger in the kitchen, I have to leave the room. Um, so, and then we have to get the diet right for these dogs. We don't want heavy, damp producing foods for these guys. So I really, and it's expensive expensive to feed these guys, unfortunately. I really like rabbit. Now I did have, and I don't like dry kibble because that produces more damp heat. I had one guy with two big German shepherds and um, one of them had really bad perianal fistulas and he just, he said, I just cannot afford to put this dog on a uh, rabbit diet. And um, he had small children. He didn't want to use raw food. So um, he did actually manage to get it cleared up using a dry kibble. I highly do not recommend that because it took a long time and I think we could have, uh, yes, we are adding that, Teresa, to the inventory. That's it. Gwen ordered it. It'll be here next week. Um, so, oh, the price of everything is up. Um, so, uh, I like rabbit because one, it's not heavy. It's a great cheat tonic. Um, it's lean, it's light, it's pretty easy for them to digest. I would not, even though we want a, a cooling protein, I would not go with duck here because duck tends to be a little heavier, a little more uh, cloying. I would not use beef. Beef is heavier. A lot of these dogs don't tolerate beef. And we certainly want to avoid the hot things like lamb. Lamb is also heavy. We want to avoid lamb. We want to avoid um, uh, chicken. Some of them, believe it or not, even though it's a hot protein, it will do well on venison only because it's a very lean protein. So it's drying. It's a little more of, of a drying protein. So even though it's hot, um, if we balance out the diet with a lot of other cooling things, we might get away with that. And people like that because we've got a lot of hunters who um, can get venison very easily. Um, and less expensive uh, to do that. But I would love to go with a cold water fish, like a white fish. Um, a, a cod would be great. Again, we're talking expensive foods. But let me tell you, if you don't get uh, the diet right and get these things dried up and healed, they will plague your dog for a very long time. And um, I've had dogs that die from these because they, they just develop so many of them. You could try turkey. Um, certainly would be better than duck. You could try it. Uh, a lean pork, very lean, you know, that other white meat. Uh, so like a lean pork tenderloin might work. We just don't, and, and it's the only reason I'm saying lean because we want good fats in the diet, but we want to be careful that the fats are not heavy and weighing things down on these guys. Bison uh, might be a good idea, Mitch. Um, it's, a, it's leaner and a lot less heavy than the, um, the beef is. So you guys, you guys are great. You're learning something here. Uh, could you mix rabbit and venison together? You could, and that would be a way to, to bring the energetics down and help cool that. So once we get these guys on a nice diet that is going to decrease that damp heat, we get the herbs on board, we get the antibiotics um, to, for that initial phase to clear things up, we do really well with these guys. Um, the only ones that I was not able to get healed were ones that came to me very late that had multiple fish. I mean, these dogs were just miserable. These are very, very painful for these dogs. Um, is the cod okay to add to small batch? Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, so you might need to use some anti-inflammatories and I would certainly try to go with, uh, natural anti-inflammatories. Um, and actually we have a lot more in our arsenal now than we did when, when I was practicing. So I might look at adding the PEA to these dogs. I might look at adding the plant, um, sterols to these dogs. 
because most of them are put on immune suppressants like tacrolimus or cyclosporin or Apoquel, God forbid. Uh, and we really don't like to use those. So if we can find a natural anti-inflammatory, um, that would be where I'd want to go with these guys. So the PEA or the plant sterols, CBD can be very helpful for these guys. Um, and I know Brandon has some really nice topical CBD products, uh, <clears throat> like the Remedy that I might try. Uh, some of these dogs will not let you touch that area though, so they can be very difficult. I don't know if anybody has a spray CBD topical. I'm, I'm sure there's some out there. I, I can guarantee there's some out there. Um, I'm not a colloidal silver person, but that uh, if you have a high quality colloidal silver, that would be something that you might try on that area as well. So um, I'm talking about uh, perianal fistulas, uh, most commonly seen in German shepherds. They're, they're really a problem and you need to keep that area back there really clean. So shave the hair away. Um, if you can, there you go. Heather said Buddy Earth has a spray. Um, uh, if you can get this dog to sit in a tub with uh, Epsom salts, warm water, Epsom salts, and um, baking soda, can also be very helpful. Um, and basically we're using it to draw out that infection, take down that inflammation. Um, so that's very helpful for these guys. Not too many of my clients were successful in getting their dogs to do that because it's kind of painful, but um, you give it a try. Okay, I gotta get going to the farm. Hugh left early, but he wasn't gonna feed anybody because he, then he was heading out to a doctor's appointment. So. I gotta go feed some screaming donkeys. I'm sure that everybody is screaming for their breakfast at this point.